All right, I clicked it. All right, I clicked it. I clicked it. I clicked the button. I didn't want to click the button, but I clicked the button. <laughs> What's good? Hello. I clicked the button. All right, you guys, you warmed me over with your charming pre-chats. Good job. Good job, you charmers. Um, Daniel's Pac, thank you for the 35 months. Holy the hair. Don't make fun of my clearly needing a haircut hair. What's that on your head? It's a dead cat. <laughs> um, Zoomer hairstyle this is not a Zoomer hairstyle, bro. This is, <laughs> I don't know what this is. I need a haircut. That's why I've been wearing a hat, dude. It's getting too messy and long, but I don't have the thickness to have long hair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? See how it gets a little scraggly? No, I got to cut this bitch, but I will. Um, my brother, you don't look healthy. Oh, well, I've been sick for uh, over a week now, bro. I think I look fine, though. Fuck you. My eyes better. Uh, love it. Beat it. Won't backseat it. What's good? We watching. La oh, uh, any fun Bellatro runs offline? I uninstalled Bellatro. <laughs> Yeah, I uninstalled it, bro. It's actually that game is that game is I play I literally I think I only had it for a day and a half. And in that day and a half I played too much and I was like, ah, I can't. I can't have a game that I want to play offline. That my whole day can't stand it. Can't I can't I can't run with that. <laughs> so I I beat the thing and I uninstalled. Um have you ever never gotten to roguelikes? No, I have. And every time I get addicted. I, I think I played Hades like a fucking fiend until I beat all of the heat. Uh, or I unlocked the last pillar. And then I was like, wow, I wasted 200 hours. Um, why do you look wet? Why do I look wet? <laughs> I'm not wet. <laughs> wasted? You don't have fun? You're right. No, I did have fun. Obviously, I played it because I have fun. But you guys know the feeling, right? I, I you know, the that's the uh, it's the constant struggle with your brain where it's like, yes, I'm spending my time having fun, but I'm not being productive, and then you get mad at yourself. Um, you know, it's the it's the age old struggle. Uh, sickness makes people sweat, and also, yeah, I'm, I'm getting over a sickness. My eyes are getting over a the fucking eye herpes. And I'm having, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm, I feel a lot. I feel great. I think by tomorrow I'm a hundred percent good. What day is it? The 27th, 27 episodes of house tonight. I'm fiending for more. You're fiending for more than 27. So if I were to give in and do 27 house episodes in a row, you would be mad at me. Cause I didn't give you 28. That's why streaming is the hardest job in the world. <laughs> Hassan was right. Hassan fucking nailed it, dude. You sit there and you react to 27 episodes of someone else's content, and then you don't react to 28, and they're mad at you. It's the hardest fucking job, dude. Are you soaked from working so hard getting predictions ready? I think predictions is a band word, which is why you're typing it like that, which is very funny. No, I gave up on it. Well, I don't know if I gave up on it, but I'm never going to talk about it unless I finish it. Predictions piss me off. I got so mad at myself and at the world. <laughs> I've never, ever, ever been like that. I've never been smashing my head on the desk and like shadow boxing. And it was, uh, I was, it was terrible. Uh, I'm, uh, what a soul sucking project that was to me. Um, uh, looking good. Nice hair. Thank you very much. I disagree. I'm going to be cutting it very soon. But I appreciate your your kindness. It is truly hair, that's for sure. Do you have any advice on how to not get addicted to Hearthstone? You're asking the guy who got a Hearthstone sponsorship to play for two hours and then played it for 80 hours, including on a vacation with Aiden, in order to get to Legend. <laughs> well, I'm the least person to ask. The only way I quit Hearthstone is whenever I have a goal and I hit the goal. Why do you look dead? Do I look dead to you? I think I look like a guy who's been in a busy day and just got over an illness. Did you ever beat Baldur's Gate? No. No. Um, 
No, no, sure. Um, bro looks like he's been crying. <laughs> Dude, my eyes are just red, all right? Because I've been boofing it with your mother, bitch. Bald pigeon. Um, bro's looking like that last house patient. <laughs> Which one? Oh, <laughs> the demon time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, bro's boofing and goofing. Uh, would love to see some Baldur's Gate three. I don't think it's a good stream game. Yikes! Oh, he said it. He says it again. The bold. I'm like literally that Norman Rockwell painting. The guy standing up in the courtroom. I'm the hero that will tell you that what I think a game is not a good stream game. Uh. And it doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's still a great game. Thank you for being live, HROC. Keep up the good work, smiley face. Thanks, man. This really means a lot. This is this is the message I'll or lock into my brain. <laughs> uh, HROC, you look like my dad if he was Latino. Sorry, let me see this. Thanks, man. I I don't know how to take that. <laughs> I have no idea how to take that. I, I guess I'll take it as it comes. That's a huge compliment. You're saying, you know, people look up to their fathers. Um, my mom said you looked really crazy. <laughs> you, sh My stream's been live for seven minutes. You showed your mom. You said, hey, mom, this is the guy I'm watching. Fuck. Maybe I can. It's it's over. This is, this is a haircut central, baby. Uh, my mom always watches. How many of you watch this with your mothers? <laughs> I, I, that makes explain. Explains why they DM me afterwards. Um, Atriac, did you see the Kingmakers announcement trailer? You're not prepared for the Whiplash. Kingmakers? No, I don't know what that is. Kingmakers uh, trailer. What is that? Kingmakers. Oh, I have seen this. Oh, this game's actually so hype. Wait, we, we can watch this together. This game's actually so hype. It, it's like, dude, I love seeing um, an indie game where I know the developer is going to make life-changing money forever. <laughs> and this is we one of them. know where he came from. But I'll tell you, he built our village into a city. He's the one who trained our army, who grew us into an empire. Mm. I don't know where he's from, but if you think you can stop him, you're already dead. <laughs> it's just like Power World, bro. It's just like, give the people what they want. This is what people want. It just indie devs are like cutting through all the bullshit and just be like, hey, somebody wants this. I'm just going to make it happen and make fucking life-changing money. And that's what this is. Uh, it's not like hyper-polished. It's not, you know, triple A. It's probably going to have a fuck ton of bugs, but it's going to sell like crazy because the clips will be really funny. Streamers will play it. Just Do you guys honestly think if you were teleported back in time to the medieval era and you had like an AK-47, a grenade, and a truck, that you could actually gain any real power? Every, every one of you said yes. Every one of you. Now, see, I feel like I just get hit with an arrow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have this. There's more than just, you know, the power of a gun. You need like, you need... Supply lines. <laughs> uh, I think you just get fucked up. I feel like I feel like you would you would change history very little. Um, I would die immediately without big A streams. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> you get teleported back in time to the medieval era, and you just you just collapse. You fall to the floor because you know you can no longer watch. Me watch trailers. <laughs> uh, 
That's crazy, man. I really appreciate that. That's that's that is a true support. That is what I'm looking for. Um I would take my knowledge of Atrioc and educate them, and they would make me king. <laughs> You're gonna teach fucking medieval peasants about the three lines? <laughs> See, this is perceived value. Uh, that's good. This is basically just Mountain Blade. Did you ever play Mountain Blade? It's Mountain Blade, but with guns, where you're a superhero. Uh, that's what this is. This is Mountain Blade with guns, which is a pretty fun idea. Um, the zoom out to RTS is crazy. I don't think it's going to be actually an RTS. I think it's like setting up your, your dream battle, and then you... It looks like you need an RTX 1665367789 to run it. I would love to sell that GPU. Bring me back to sell that one. Um, couldn't this just be a Fortnite map or a Roblox game or something? Bro, you could say that about every game. <laughs> yeah, this is nice, but couldn't it be a Fortnite map? Uh, yeah, the, the editors have gotten pretty good. If that's if you if you only want to be in two launchers, if you are just turned fourteen and you don't want to get out of the, then yeah, yeah you could. Um, uh, you should try Road ninety six, super fun indie game about a teenager trying to cross the border. Infinite endings. How could you have infinite endings? Well, <laughs> there's no way. There's infinite endings. There's just no way. Um, road 96 is a great everyone's saying it what is road 96 road 96 an ever evolving I mean, you guys are adding a new game when I'm already late on the game I was supposed to play today. <laughs> Which, by the way, you know, today didn't work out like I planned. I don't regret how I did it. I had to do that meeting. I'm glad I did it. Um, but I am a little annoyed that I yet again double booked myself. Hitchhike your way to freedom in this crazy procedurally generated road trip. This looks kind of fun. <laughs> the reviews are really good. It's got a funny art style. One of the best indie video games of the whole year. Wait, I kind of really want to play this. But obviously, this is not a good time to add a new game to the pile. Um... So I will move this to second from the top. Second from the top. Second from the top. It's not gonna be like the magic stack. It's gonna it's not gonna go to the top. <laughs> uh, please feed the inscription frogs, please. Bro, you're, this is your first time chat message. This is your first chat message. What uh, no. <laughs> bro, I'm not playing inscription. I don't know what to tell you. Inscription, bro, I play I play the fun part. What, <laughs> what do you want from me? You know how it ends. Mm. Mobile chatter. Uh, you could still play Outer Wilds tonight? I guess I could. I was kind of thinking of watching a house or something. I don't know. Um, I do think I have tomorrow. Actually, let me ask right now. Let me ask right now if I can... Uh, uh, relocate a meeting. I have a meeting at 12 noon tomorrow that often lasts two to three hours. 
Oh, separate from that, but that does remind me. Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys now, and I'm going to tell you later as well. Uh, Isto and I did a video. Um, three hours versus oh, e. three, <laughs> easy. three years of Blender. Uh, oh, it was more than the same thing. We did this video, and it got 1.9 million views. Shit popped the fuck off. And this thing was like at 8K forever. It just popped off. Um, which is swag. So we're going to do another one um, with sculpting, 3D sculpting. So if you are a professional 3D sculptor that uses ZBrush or Blender and would like to... Um, like to be in our video as our pro. You must be a professional. We're going to check, you know, verify. <laughs> Ideally, you have some credits under your belt. Um, or if you know somebody who works in ZBrush or Blender and is a pro, uh, please reach out via DM on Discord or Twitter. I have open DMs on those. And I would happily like to refer you to Isto, who is organizing. And we're going to do another one of those videos. I think it'll be great. I think it'll be grand. Uh... Hey, truck. I've never done it, but I have a go-getter attitude, so I can be your pro. If so, you hear that? Galen403 has a go-getter attitude. Can you interview him and set that up? I think we might. He might be the perfect, might be the perfect candidate. He's got gumption. He's got moxie. Do you know what I'm saying? Very unlikely we need somebody who really knows the technical aspects of these tools. Um. Oh, you know what? Actually, just message Isto directly. Because if you message me, I may be slow to respond. Uh, though I've been pretty good, actually. I think I've been. I think I've been on my game. Um, Blender. I hardly know her. <laughs> That's an Evan Gal classic. Can we get a fucking VIP for that one? My God, dude, this guy just comes in and drops bombs over Baghdad, literally and figuratively. Um, sheesh. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Um, I like your hair right now. Nah, JK, we cool. <laughs> are you role play? <laughs> are you? Why are you doing a whole thing, bro? <laughs> nah, Jay, you were cool. Uh. Green dog blue. Love the content still. Thank you for the 24 months. I appreciate that. Green dog blue. What was your first message? You first message in this chat way back. Way back. Way still scrolling in 2020. 19. Holy shit. You, this guy's an old head. Wait, Green Dog Blue's first message was in 2019. Wait, you've only been subbed for two years, yet you've been chatting for four. Banned. <laughs> Sorry, but banned. Okay. <laughs> uh, obviously, every chat you've done has been freeloading, okay? Off of the hardworking... No, I'm kidding. Um, you said... In 2019, you spammed yay, 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 nay, nay, nay. Boy needs some rest. Get a quick two-hour po two power nap, and it'll get your gears moving. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I don't know what you were talking about, but you know what? Probably still applies. Um. Then you, yeah, all right, cool. Appreciate you. Uh, I've been a YouTube watcher forever, but recently started being able to catch live due to the union. In what way is the union responsible for you being able to watch live now? 
<laughs> their live ping channel? We had a ping channel. <laughs> what they're fighting for your rights. What what did they do? <laughs> the union makes all of our lives better. You guys are talking like uh North Koreans talk about Kim Jong un. <laughs> He's the light. He makes all of our lives better. Everything he does is great. <laughs> uh, they scored a hole in one ten times in a row. Zuckerberg does his hair like Caesar because he wants to take over the world. Meanwhile, my favorite streamer does his hair like Diogenes. I, that's what I did. I pulled up to the barber and I said, give me the Diogenes, bro. <laughs> He's like, you know what you want? I said, fuck yeah, dude. I want the Diogenes. Uh, number two on the side. Say less, King. <laughs> <laughs> The uh, guy named Ogenes, why he hate me. <laughs> Wait, let me pop you off there. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. Uh, damn, I lost your message, but it was a good one. What do you say fuck me for? I love it, he said. I don't think I talk enough about how much I love 50 Cent. <laughs> I talk about it a little bit. But I don't think you guys know that I've read cover to cover not one but two different books written by 50 Cent. Two cover to cover 50 Cent advice life books. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, at different parts in my life. He wrote books. I can't. I don't know if he wrote them or not, but they, they, good advice. Some, some of it's good. Uh, late nights, Blotro. I uninstalled Blotro. Straight up. Straight up. You look like a pothead uncle. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's talk about Trump. <laughs> And how he's going to save this great nation. Uh, <clears throat> why uninstall addicted? I just, I, this set, I, again, I installed it for the first time. In the next 48 hours, I played, I don't know, 30 hours. <laughs> and then I was like, ah, I'm done. And I uninstalled it. Hmm. Thirty hours. When's the last time you bought a mattress? Uh, a few years back, I bought an eight sleep mattress, which is what uh, Silicon Valley tech bros buy when they have too much money and not enough sense, and they really want to optimize and track their sleep to an unhealthy degree. Um, that is what I did. Thirty hours. Uh. I can't, bro, is EP. <laughs> Does eight sleep work for you? Yeah, I mean, it. you know what I'm saying? It's like, um, I don't know. It's like buying a book on dieting. You still got to eat the food. <laughs> yeah, I, I can buy all the shit. All, I can buy all the sleep masks. But like at the end of the day, what I got to do is get in bed on time, lay down and go to bed. That's the thing that's most important. And really the mattress doesn't, it didn't change anything. It's like a nice mattress, but um, it is it is nice to know like when I, when I had a really good or bad sleep because it, it tracks your sleep pretty well. And it's been pretty accurate for me. Like when it says it's red, it's like, damn, I feel fucking, um, but not tonight, though, right? We're streaming to the rise of the sun. Yes, sir. This fucking train don't stop, baby. When I go live, I never go offline. 
It's just me and you chat to the fucking till the brakes come off. All right, we're in this bitch till we die. Uh, I'm gonna beat not just Prince of Persia, but Outer Wilds and everything else, all in one stream. <laughs> Can we get some EU love? It's six eleven. This is EU love. All right, I'm turning all my EU chatters into Sigma Giga chats who wake up at the five a.m. <laughs> They fucking set the alarm for 5 a.m., wake up, do a cold press, 100 push-ups, and then watch my stream for eight hours. I've never streamed eight hours in my life, except for <laughs> except for out uh, Elden Ring. Make your beds, dude. Hey, Big A, very important question about the economy and all that. How many of you do you think it would take to beat two chimpanzees? Their terrain is their natural habitat, and you stole their banana. How many of me to beat two chimpanzees who are furious at me for stealing their banana? I need quite a few. I, I, monkeys are strong. And I I think I'm also, like, they have the moral high ground because I'm in their home and I stole their banana. <laughs> It would be different like if it was like in my home and they were stealing from my fridge because then I'd defend my honor and my um, I think I could do it with four, five. I, I mean, I guess it depends. Let, am I completely, completely, completely deranged? Because I think a lot of what a fight will come down to is like, do I have literally no qualms at all about trying to kill this beast? <laughs> I think if it's like four or five of me and it's just like we are we are biting, scratching, kicking, <laughs> you know, it's first survival, grabbing and hacking into their like whatever it takes. Or if I'm like backing away, like trying to do you know what I'm saying? Is it feral? I think if it's feral, I think four or five does it. I'm not even trying to exaggerate. I just think. Um, it's also like, you know, they're busy with one. Like, obviously, I'm pushing another Aatrox into the line of fire. <laughs> That's the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my clone and I'm pushing him in the line of fire. And then I'm trying to get behind the chimp. You know, and just fucking anything sharp. <laughs> if you can pick up a rock, you can do it with four easy. Yeah, I just think any kind of weapon. Again, if it's bare hands, that's different, but any kind of any kind of instrument. Um Hey, Big A, did you realize the name and logo on your Enron hat looks like a company that committed fraud in the 2000s? Figured I'll let you know. Wait, what? First I'm hearing of this. Wait, what? Enron, the energy company. Uh, an American pioneer? Founded in Texas? Kenneth Lay, one of the greatest CEOs of all time. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Epstein, the financier. <laughs> Are you Googling this info? No, I don't. You think I don't know about Enron, bro? I wear a fucking Enron hat and a shirt 24 7. You think I don't know the fucking story of Enron? Uh, hmm. Enron's a popping hat. Yeah, it's a popping fashion company now. Enron's one of the fucking fastest growing fashion brands in this nation. Would you have saved Enron? No, of course not. There's no there's no saving. What do you mean saving? It's it, The company was completely fraudulent, top to bottom. Um, why, why do you save it? Hmm... Did you ever do an Enron specific video? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, it's my white whale. That is my white whale. 
I would love to do one of those, but I have a lot of others to do. What's up with the hair? What's your problem with it? Stooky. What is there? What, what, what do I have to do for you? <laughs> uh, was Enron a Ponzi scheme? No, it was not. Enron was out and out fraud. I should make a video on it, but it is basically like if you, um, I don't know, you know, <laughs> if you had a lemonade stand and then when you were like recording how much you made and lost, like your profit and losses, you're like, well, we sold, you know, a hundred gallons of lemonade and our cost of lemons was zero. And it's because you took all the cost of buying the lemons and put it on a secret subsidiary shell company <laughs> and then hid it off your books and then reported to Wall Street that like you had 100% profits and like there was no costs. And then um, Wall Street's like, holy shit, this company's great. It keeps growing and growing and growing and doesn't spend very much. But then you find out that they're spending a fucking lot <laughs> and they've been hiding it all and cooking their books. Um, why would Wall Street buy that? Well, again, don't pre-spoil if I ever did this video, but there was five big accounting firms that are very uh, long-running and trusted. They're called the Big Five. And one of them was Arthur Anderson. And they were part of the fraud with Enron. And so they basically signed off on all of these statements to Wall Street that were like, yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Um, and once this fraud came out, Arthur Anderson exploded and now there's only the big four. <laughs> now, like if you talk to an accountant, they'll be like, yeah, I want to work in the big four. They don't even know. Like a, a, a kid in school nowadays going for the accounting degree, they don't even know it used to be the big five. Um, hmm. Why is it okay to use the Enron brand? Why do you guys pocket watch like this? I honestly want to get into your minds. Uh, it's obviously they could. Whoever, whatever holding company still owns it could track me down and get me to stop. But nobody cares. But I don't I don't understand like the mindset. Like people come in here at fucking midnight and they're like, um, is it okay for with NBC if you watch House? <laughs> it's like, bro, if it's not, they'll figure it out. They don't need you. But there's a fucking 10 million house episodes, 10 million views on TikTok right now. So maybe my fucking 2K view stream is not the problem. Um, yeah, it's like the people emailing Nintendo about Power World. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's such, it, I don't know, it's just like, it, give me, it gives me weird bootlicker energy, bro. It's like, what, what the fuck? It's not your job, little bro. You don't benefit financially. Who gives a shit? Like, they'll handle their business. They're big boys. Uh... Um... Was there like a whitewashing of the event? Like I'm 27, but I only hear this from you. I drop in on finance pods. I, no, there wasn't. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a little out of date now. You're 27, maybe you just missed it, but Enron was a huge deal and everyone talks about it and did talk about it. Um, it's just old. I mean, it's not even that old. I mean, what, 2002, 2002, I think it was. It's, it's in this, you know, it's in post 2000. Um, um, Evan Gao was alive Most of Chad is younger than that Yeah I'm not saying I'm just saying if The guy's 27 right He was alive for this um, And certainly like Could have heard about it It's not It's not hidden Certainly not whitewashed um, But I do think like uh, The younger you are The more Your reference for fraud is 2008 and the big short which of course it still is for me i am still that that is my that is when i you know i'm like what 
15, 16. That's, that's my thing. But like I had a little bit of the dot com. Like I know about the dot com bubble, which is 2001 too, and Enron and WorldCom and all the frauds of that. Like, you know, most of the time the economy hums along and then there's a big fucking blow up. <laughs> and the last two were 2008 and 2001. And I feel like a lot of people don't know about 2001, which I think is interesting because I think right now, 2024, is most similar to 2001. I think a lot, if you look at our economy right now, so many things are like echoes of 2001, where there's like, there's a new tech that's really pog and it's taken over everything and everyone's trying to be, you know, in 2001, it was .com. Everyone's like, we got to put .com in our name. We got to talk about .com. And this now it's AI. The market is extremely concentrated. It hasn't been this concentrated since 2001, where only a few stocks are blowing up. Um, it is, it's very, very similar to 2001. Um, Um, I think it's crazy our grandparents walked the streets of California with Picasso. What are you smoking, <laughs> little bro? <laughs> what are you smoking? No, see, I don't think it's like 2008. 2008's kind of so different. 2008 is like um, just mountains of bad loans in housing to people that could not ever afford to pay them back. That's not really the case right now. People, there's not a lot of like mortgage default right now. Um, do you think this will give rise to old school rap coming back? What? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? The, the concentration of AI bubbly stocks will give rise to, what are you talking about? And I don't think anything's bringing old school rap back. I do think, I do think this, um. So in the 90s, early 2000s, basically late 99 with the rise of Eminem is when hip hop finally became the number one genre, beating rock. And for the next, and from then till now, basically 20, 25 years, hip hop has been the dominant genre on the charts. Everything has been hip hop influenced. It's become pure pop. It's become pop. Like it's the most popular music. I think that is finally about to end. If I had to make a guess, I'd say we are at the beginning of a genre shift. I don't know what's next. I'm too old. There is going to be a new mainstream type of sound. Um, that is like, I think we are in the early stages of something bubbling over. Uh... Just with the way like trends work in generations. Um, yeah, it'll have to be something we steal from black people for sure. <laughs> hundred percent. So if anybody in chat is black, just let me know what you guys are cooking up and we can steal it and uh, try to move on to the next thing. Um or it could be K-pop. It could be K-pop. Yeah, it, I mean, it could be that kind of thing. K-pop, higher pop, J-pop adjacent. Like, that could... It, it could be something... That become the new mainstream. I don't know. Some I, Again, I have no idea. I'm not an expert. But something will be the new mainstream. And I think, I think hip-hop's era at the top for the past 20, 25 years will finally be over. I do think it'll be changing. Which is, you know, I'm a, I'm a hip-hop head. I've been in it... Uh, I know that I'm the whitest person on screen you can ever see, but I really, 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 really am interested in hip hop. Um, um, I don't think we will follow the trends we used to. Um, I disagree, right? Because I don't think it's like some kind of magical. Although I do think, I will say something is interesting. I think um, people's relationship with popular music has changed with the rise of TikTok in a way that it never did before, which is that um, songs going viral, like TikTok is now the world's radio, which is how people find the new shit. 
And songs going viral can come from any era and be about anything. Like there's actually even, there's not even really one culture anymore. <laughs> like, you know, kids are listening to a fucking random 60s song or like, just any song can go viral at any time. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. So it's becoming really disjointed. I will say that it's, it's like, it's less of a mono culture in any way. Um, but I still think there's an overall trend, like a big seismic turning a big ship slowly type ship of, uh, of getting out of hip hop as the dominant one. Um, Look at four bats on Spotify. Dude has millions of listeners with two songs thanks to TikTok. Yeah, I mean, TikTok is, I mean, this is not even new news anymore. I wanted to make a video on this like three years ago. TikTok became the, the world's radio and now it's how everyone blows up and now songs are getting shorter to optimize for TikTok. Dude, did you see? This was fucking brain rotted out of my fucking skull. Did you see that Spotify was trying to make like a radio feature where it only plays the hypest, the hypest 30 seconds of a song then goes to the next song. Did you see that? It's like song shorts. You like scroll and people are just listening to the fucking chorus or whatever and then it goes to the next. Um, That's brain rot, bro. That's crazy to me. Will there be a need for record labels in the future or will independent artists be able to function on their own? I mean, obviously we're in the golden era of being an independent artist more than ever in history because the only thing the label does for you is distribution and marketing and everyone has figured out that they can be better at marketing on their own than the label even was. <laughs> like they can get buzz with social media faster than the label ever could and then distribution is less and less important because everyone goes through the same platforms. So like if you have TikTok and you can make your own buzz and you know how to sign up for Spotify and set your thing up, label doesn't do shit for you and they take a big cut. So nobody needs it as much anymore for sure. But also like, you know, longevity, strategy, collaborations, there's things they can do for you. Um, but I, yeah, I do think it's same thing with games, like with, with games, you no longer need a big publisher. Like so many of the big games that have been blowing up are indie. They can just cut out the middleman and go for it. Like now that the cost of creation is way down, the only problem with that is now if you do blow up, you are way more likely to be forgotten quickly <laughs> because there's no, the, the amount of people ready to take your spot that are also talented is never been higher. Um, That's the dangerous, like that's the, the harder part of it. Um. Why do some big artists not put their music on platforms even if they don't like the cut? Isn't some money better than no money? Well, that's a very, um, <laughs> it's kind of a bootlicky way to say it, which is like, yeah, look, Amazon, yeah, sure. <laughs> Amazon wants to pay you eight cents an hour, <laughs> but like, what are you gonna do? You can't work. Some money's better than no money. You know what I'm saying? Like, at the end of the day, they're trying to hold the value of their songs and and ask for a certain cut or a certain. Um, that's the idea, but also it could be their label. There, there's so many music has so many um, lawyers. It, it's such a contract heavy uh, industry. Music is extremely litigious extremely just difficult. It's just, there's, they have a lot of contract problems. Um, I remember it was so scary when we were at Twitch. We had, uh, cause I was at Twitch from early days. I was, I was employee 100 or 99 at Twitch. And when we started, it was like, fuck it, anything, anything goes. Everyone can stream songs and it's fine. <laughs> and then we got a huge fucking pressure from the uh, RIAA with the recording industry of America. And we had to mute VODs. We had to do the auto muting of VODs so that we wouldn't get our DMCA safe harbor taken. And it was like such chaos at the office. Like it was like such, people were freaking out. 
Um, what's DMCA safe harbor? There's internet laws that basically make it so if you're a platform, like if you're YouTube, you're not held responsible if some dude makes a YouTube account and uploads something copyrighted. As long as you take it down, you know, as long as you follow the laws, if they, if the copyright owner says take it down, take it down, like it just makes it so you're allowed to run a platform without getting fucking owned by some user doing something malicious. And uh, the thing was that people could go live, stream copyrighted music, and then have a VOD of that copyrighted music and then just link it to somebody. And so we had to mute the VOD because the laws applied to um, recorded uh, versions of the songs, not necessarily live. Um, yeah, Twitch was storing saved clips of copyrighted music. And we couldn't do that. And so we had to mute the VODs. Otherwise, they were going to take get rid of our safe harbor. And then Twitch would have been liable for anything anyone streamed or uploaded, which would have been, you know, $60 billion of legal fees dead for the company. Um Copyright is such a headache. It makes me less motivated to make music. Yeah, it's fucked up. It's, I mean, it's not a great system. But also, it would suck if anyone could copy anything you did creatively. Uh, nowadays, what they do is they take what you're doing creatively and they feed it into an AI and then make a near <laughs> similar duplicate and then say it's functionally different and then um, cut you out of the process. Um It's not, yeah, it's not copyright if a robot stole it and made it. Um, it's rock, fuck you. I was excited to come into chat at 10 p.m. EST today and talk to you about how I was going to finish my diff EQ project, but now I have procrastinated and I'm going to fail. This is all your fault. You were excited to come in here and talk to me about how you were going to finish it. Why don't you just go finish it? <laughs> Why, why don't you just go finish it, bro? Why, why were you ever excited to leave working on it to go to a stream and talk about finishing it? By the way, piece of advice. This is the most goaded advice. I'm going to give you guys some real fucking game. God, I'm going to put you on game right now. This is a life changer, okay? Fuck, this is literally going to change your life so fucking hard. All right. <clears throat> if you have a plan, and by the way, I, you, there's many examples you can find of me not following this advice and it going poorly. So there you go. Do as I say, not as I do. If you have something you want to do, let's say you want to get healthy or you want to work out or you want to start playing piano every day or whatever. You want to start. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody. Do it in secret. Do it in secret, get it way done, and then tell them afterwards. Not only is it going to feel better if you've actually done it for a while and then revealed it, but also your brain gets the same dopamine from talking about doing it as actually doing it. <laughs> it is proven fact that if you're like, I'm going to start doing this, this, and this, your brain gives you the chemical reward as if you've done it. Um... And then you're like, eh, nah, I don't really feel the need to do it. <laughs> so I'm telling you honestly and earnestly, if you have something you really want to do, don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Um... Uh... I, I'm i studying my computer science degree. People in classes are horrible at socializing and are awkward. <laughs> Bro, I, I'm just reading into this. By the way, you're a sub, so I'm sure you're a Chad. Um, my mind jumps to the fact that maybe possibly you have some antisocial tendencies as well because you're in here and you're mad about it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just telling you that that's my vibe, I guess, because... Um, the real fun thing to be would be truly go with the flow easy. Almost like looking for the good in people. 
And I feel like you might be one of those people where it's like you have a naturally um, negative outlook. And so it becomes more difficult. I'm sure, as with all situations, there's diamonds in the rough. You can find somebody in your in your classes that are um, funny or interesting or have something in common. I, I have learned over my six million years on earth that almost everybody uh, has some interesting shit to talk about if you can get through their outer shell. The outer shell is the hard part. But if you can disarm them, if you can get to a, if you can get past the, um, then they usually have some shit. They have some, they have some good shit. Um, Is this advice for socializing or taking out the hunters in Halo? <laughs> both. Like all good advice, it's both. <laughs> all right. I had a Zoom class today and I was the only person actually talking with their microphone. Everyone else was typing in the chat. Like you are paying to attend college. Why are you not engaged? Uh, the reason they are doing that is because they only care about getting the degree because society and their parents, people around them have implied heavily, if not outright told them that it's required to get the life they want. So they they truly do not care about learning at all. They would like to get the degree so that they can graduate and then get a job that ideally is higher paying than if they didn't have the degree. That is the that is the goal. Um, just, I mean, everyone knows this, I think, but it's worth saying. <laughs> yeah. So that that will explain your discrepancy. People are not paying to college because they think it is an intellectual journey. <laughs> They are spending the money as part of a calculated gamble that it will pay off financially. Um, hey, Shrock, when do we get past your outer shell so we can hear you say something interesting? It's kind of mean. <laughs> I think I I think it's been a fun vibe. I think there's been some interesting stuff here. I don't know that. Obviously, maybe you're not feeling it. It's fine. Um, I got a degree in things I was really interested in, and it's not very employable, but I regret nothing. That's based. Um, yeah, I mean, good for you. I, I would have a couple regrets <laughs> if I had a huge student loans. It depends on if you have huge student loans. If you got huge student loans, it would piss me off. Um if you don't, you're good. Just because um, there's just a lot of pressure to just ignore, just ignore and sign, you know, these student loans. Um, and then you wake up and it's like, damn, that was expensive. That's <laughs> fuck. Uh, Imagine not being born in the generational wealth and getting a degree in museum curation. I will say this is something that people need to learn because it's a, it's a cause of a lot of heartache. There are certain jobs that only exist for rich kids. This is not like a, I'm not making fun of it. I'm not, I'm saying this is a fact. There are certain jobs that only exist. They're like high culture jobs that do not make money. They only exist if you are subsidized. Publishing, book publishing, there, there's these career, or like most of fashion, there's these jobs that exist as like, they're almost like luxury jobs. They exist as the as like, you know, the way a French poodle would not exist in the wild. <laughs> it only, they only exist as the offshoots of money, of, of, of established wealth. And there are people that work really, really hard and put a lot of time and effort and money and debt to try and get into these fields and then find out that everyone around them is just a rich kid. Um, and they realize there is no money in it. There's no growth in it. They can't pay off their loans. 
And it's very demoralizing. And this happens to people because they get passionate about these rich kid jobs. So some of these jobs are literally just the entire industry is is exists um, for families of wealth. Um Is there a new skill slash hobby that you'd like to start up or something you like learn recently? Uh, I've been learning some, you know, I've been hanging out with Isto more. I've been learning some game dev design marketing stuff. It's all interesting to me. I think the, I think from what I've been studying um, on the economics side and, and like I've been so interested in monopolies and the games industry is like one of the few industries left that really is still somewhat open and highly competitive. There's not, there's not strong middlemen. There is, you know, a big tax you have to pay to the stores like steam, but like you can really do whatever you want in those industries and make your own success. Um, Ubisoft does not have a competitive advantage over a random game dev which is cool. They used to. They used to, but the games are getting cheaper and cheaper to make. So I think that's interesting and I'm, I've been learning more about it. I watch some GDC talks and stuff. I also think it would be a really good skill to learn if I really, really cared about marketing right now. Like obviously I care about marketing because I, I like um, the news and I'm interested a lot in business, but I don't, like if, if I was going to work for a company right now, I think I really would want to grind short form video marketing, like TikTok and, and YouTube shorts. I think I would really need to understand what companies are doing it the best, who is converting to sales, what makes a great short market. I think I, I think I think that stuff happened um, the very tail end of my time at NVIDIA and I didn't give it enough effort. I hired somebody for it, but I didn't learn about it. Um, Genuine question. When you're talking, are you looking directly at chat or are you looking at your face on UBS? I'm looking at chat. This this monitor is chat. This one is my face and this is my main monitor. Um, do, 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 Did you already cover the Sony mass firing? No, I didn't cover it, but they did fire 900 people today. Looking good, economy. Three monitors, sheesh, we got a rich guy over here. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Apple has been working on an electric car for over a decade, and today they canceled it. <laughs> they realized that it uh, <laughs> that the electric car business sucks ass. Um, so whoever was internal on that team wasted a decade, but... Um, hey truck all I do is play league no major sounds fun but I want a degree that makes money what do I do <laughs> listen bro I'm not even I'm not talking down to you because I I haven't been too far from where you're at okay I haven't been too far but I gotta tell you this is not a great attitude. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. This is not a... Uh, two things I want to draw from your question. Number one, no major sounds fun. I don't think it should sound fun. I guess I don't... I, I, I've never thought of work as should be consistently fun. I think I don't know why people demand that of work. I think it should be... Um, not soul crushing to learn, <laughs> you know, I think you should, it's all, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think, uh, just for example, let's say you want to get in shape. I don't think every day getting up and going to the gym is fun. It's not, it's not in the moment fun. It's, the point is that it's like, you don't hate it and it's over time rewarding. You have to under like that. That's what you should be. That's the mindset you should be more at. I think if you're hoping that it's going to be such a thrill that I just think some things like you have to do things that suck sometimes. Like I don't know if you if you were making a game, some days you're gonna have to sit there and fucking debug something all fucking day, and it's gonna suck ass. 
But like then when you have your product, that's going to be rewarding. You're going to be like, oh, that was a good experience. That You got to think about it like that. I, I think the word fun is really th- – because you know what's fun is like smoking weed and playing league. <laughs> like, that's fun. All right? That is just fun. But that's never going to be – they're not going to pay you for that, bro. I mean, very rarely. Um, what's your opinion on inspirational books like Darren Hardy, Jim Rohn? I haven't read either of those two others, so I can't speak to it. But um, I think you're fine. Whatever gets you motivated, whatever works. I don't want to de- trash talk anybody. There's some scammers out there, some grifters, but um, kind of a personal journey. Whatever gets you out of bed, bro, it's hard. Yeah, unless it's Andrew Tate. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big fan of like Gary V or you know, all those people, but like, whatever, it works for some people. Gets you motivated. Um. Do you think it's feasible to get into game trailer editing without marketing knowledge? Yeah, I think it is. I think if you you just have to find some indie dev who's got a game coming out and say, hey, I will make you a trailer for free or for low cost. I don't have a lot of experience, but I will do it. Do you mind? And then you do it and do a good job. And they're like, oh, shit, can I use this on my Steam page? And you go, yes. And then you have a credit. <laughs> and then you go to the next person. And you're like, hey, I made this trailer for this guy. Um, and then that guy's like, yeah, you did a great job. <laughs> and then you get another, then you get another client and you charge a little bit more. And then you do that again and you charge a little bit more. And then all of a sudden you got yourself a fucking trailer business. Um, or you go talk to an indie pub or you talk to, you know, you're like, Hey, I make great trailers. Can I work for you? You guys have a lot of games. I'll make a trailer for every one of them. Um, that's all you can do. That, I mean, that that's the way, if you wanted to do it, that would be the way to do it. Working for exposure? Uh, I'm just telling you, it, <laughs> uh, obviously, in general, I don't support working for exposure. But also, if you are a indie game trailer editor and you have no experience, <laughs> and you, your only shot, let's just be real, your only shot is to do it at zero cost. Zero or very low cost. You get. You have to. You have to get a portfolio. You have to get something. Uh, otherwise, no one has any reason to trust you or give you. No one's gonna pay you full price if you have no experience. Um, Hrock, I'm starting work at an evil company. How do I tell friends and family that I work for the bad guys? Well, I, hopefully with a Rolex. <laughs> if you're working for the evil guys at fucking no money, quit. You, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's no. You better be getting paid. And if you get paid, that's how people. That's how people generally do it: is they show off their wealth. Um, Yeti, it's too late, bro. It's ten fifty. <laughs> I get it, Yeti. I get it, but it's ten fifty, bro. You want me to start right now? It's crazy. We might get fucking twenty minutes in. Um, I don't even have my master's degree medical and I'm already looking at jobs for next year. My anxiety can't take this job market. Not to discredit your anxiety, but if you have a medical master's, you're you're probably okay. Like healthcare is one area that is not under stress, really. Healthcare is good. Uh, I mean, maybe you're trying to get like a really good paying job out of that right up, but. Yeah, I wouldn't be too worried. You're not you're not becoming a travel agent. <laughs> you know, you're not you're not trying to become a game dev right now. <laughs> uh, you know, it's not I think medical is high growth. Do you know what's you know what's so funny? I was just reading something. I was reading 
I love to read the Glassdoor and Monster.com reports because they're almost more accurate pictures of the labor market than what the government prints. They'll give you more interesting trends on hiring and firing. And um, there was one I was reading that was like the top three highest growth jobs in 24 right now. And it was like, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It was like, uh, like loan repo officer. <laughs> oh, fuck. What was it? I? I saved it because I wanted it. It was like loan repo officer, um, elderly care. And and one other fu- all the top three were all funny. I forget the third one. Uh, it was cracking me up. I was almost about to tweet it, but then I was like, "Wait, I'll put it in the slides in my predictions." <laughs> and then I fucking never touched it. <sighs> Tragic. I graduate in a year on a game design undergrad and the layoffs news are killing me. Yeah, it's not a great time. Just straight up, but he'll figure it out. And also a really cool time for indie dev. So maybe if you have a find an indie dev team or make some projects. Um, Intrack, I grinded three years of internships in college for a good consulting job, and the clients' projects I worked with last fall were actively evil. It is worth trying to have morality in my early 20s, or should I put my head down and wait to have morality once I have money? People will give you different answers. I'll tell you honestly, I think you should not try to change the world by sitting this one out. <laughs> I think you should get good at your craft, but just don't. you can't get corrupted by it. I think you should make some money, get financial security and stability for you and your family especially if you have hopes of one day starting a family. I think the world needs more moral people with a stable income and kids. Um, I I have very little stock in the um, ability that you are 100% accurate of what is and isn't evil. And then also that (laughs) you sitting it out will change their path. I think you should probably get your stuff settled. But, you know, if you choose the other way, I'll, I'll respect it too. That's not my, not my business. Um, I got withdrawn from two of my classes and I'm reconsidering if school is even it for me. I want to be able to focus on my games and I'm only going to school for degrees for tech positions in the future. Should I get the degree or focus on passion projects? If you spent the money, my advice for you, my honest advice for you would be to lock in, (laughs) try to finish out that degree. Uh, I do think C's and in in some cases D's get degrees and your GPA doesn't fucking matter once you graduate. So I would tell you to try and lock in, bro. But uh, end of the day, if you can't, uh, then just take your passion project ser- take your project seriously. Take the games you're working on seriously. Make it a make it a real part of your day that you're doing consistently. Don't half ass it. I don't think you know the college path is. I think I think it's becoming more and more. I, I guess the, I think the shitty thing about college, the most shitty thing about college is that it is the same product as it was 30 years ago and it is exponentially more expensive every year. <laughs> you're not getting more for your buck. You're getting less. They're, they are, they have, you know what I'm saying? It is not uh, a good deal by any metric. <laughs> and I think that's fucked up. I think that's whack. Um so if you want to opt out of that, sure. But if you already spent the money, it's like, man, you should really try to, to make that count. Uh, how much of your time do you spend watching other streamers slash YouTubers? Not, not as much as I'd like to. I know Lud tells me he watches a lot. I think that's cool. Um... 
I will say I watch more than I used to. I watch more than I used to, and I have found some people that I think are fucking great. I mean, I, I'm on a super uh, almost Friday kick. I think those guys are the next up. They're super duper funny. I love man carrying thing. I love. Uh, I've been working with Gabby Bell. Um, I'm working with her with the Kerta stuff, but then I got recommended one of her videos, and she's fucking hilarious. So I was talking with her. I think she's really good at um, what she does. She did a, an incredible video on Timu and dropshipping. Um, there's a couple people. Um, I am a TFT guy, so I watched a fuck ton of uh, Shirku. <laughs> anyway, if you know him, you're a deep cut. That guy just uploads a fucking new VOD of him playing TFT every day and says, brother man. <laughs> uh, he's just funny. I love that guy. Um, and then I watch a ton of um, finance and economic stuff. Just in general. Like almost from anywhere. But no real standout. Hmm. How did you go from degenerate procrastinator league player to responsible Twitch worker Insta? I don't think it was Insta. And I've told the IPL6 story a million times, but that was such a shock to my life that it kind of forced me to, to lock in in my senior year. I think I locked in real hard. And then also at Twitch, do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think many people will agree that they feel very demotivated on shit that's not interesting to them and they can find themselves getting a lot more motivated when it is interesting. I think that's a very common feeling where it's like, I'm not, I think people are not as lazy as they think. It's just like they, they haven't found a way to work on something they're interested in. And uh, once I started working on stuff related to esports and marketing, it, it was I was grinding, dude. It was way more motivated. Um, I left the culinary industry with an associate's degree and I've spent the last two-ish years doing web dev stuff but struggling to find a job in tech. Feels like going back to college and getting a degree is too late. Should I just try to grind it out hope something else eventually lands? That's a tough situation. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I think you should try to find someone who really specifically knows the field you want to work in um, and what the best practices are for like standing out and being good in that field. But I would say... I don't want to encourage you to take on any fucking student debt, <laughs> but I would say like saying something is too late is crazy. Uh, I just think in general, you can find many, many examples in history of people that thought it was too late when it wasn't right. So I would just be careful on saying that, but, I, but too late can mean, I, you know, too late can mean uh, you lock in and do some projects or you like, um, find a small team that'll give you a chance to, you know, whatever it, too late doesn't mean I need to go to school and get a degree. Cause there's also, there's also a lot of people right now that have been like, um, doing those coding boot camps, which were really successful for a time. And I'm not saying they don't work, but I'm saying there's such a supply glut right now. So many people did those and they're all they're, you know, they're having a harder time than usual finding jobs because, there's layoffs, white collar layoffs, and then tons of people graduated with that. Um, so it's, what do you think about drop shipping? Get rich quick or too risky? Absolutely not get rich quick. <laughs> Absolutely not, bro. Just a fucking grindy, hard, difficult <laughs> just job for, drop shipping is, is such a, uh, it's too late. That is too late. <laughs> You're too late. You're there's no edge in drop shipping. Mm. 
A lot of interesting questions. Um, I don't think I can answer that. I don't know why I clicked this one. This one's impossible to answer. You have health issues that make you feel nervous about taking first steps into a job. It's not something you could ignore because it could take up multiple days. So you feel obligated to tell employers. Well, one thing I'll say is you don't have to tell employers shit. <laughs> you don't have to tell employers shit, bro. Don't fucking tell them. Do whatever it takes to get the job. Lock in. Don't You don't owe them shit. Fucking lie, 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 lie. Ignore. Um, get in. Get the door. Get Do the fucking thing. And then 100%, I don't think you got to. You don't owe them dick on that. But if it's like you're losing days of time, then I, it's tough to say how to help you. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. Um, just I wouldn't I wouldn't feel like you owe them anything. Do you think the trades will have a huge influx of people? people are, I, yes. Um, yes, 100 percent. I think that I mean, the trades are already making bank. I think we are in a structural bull era for blue collar work over the next you know we're in a huge like manufacturing boom in america we're in a huge like we need to fucking rebuild infrastructure we're in a huge we're you know these are all like big long-term trends with a lot of wind at their back that there's real money in especially prior to um you know, a wave of robotics that can do human-like tasks. We're not there yet. We're not. We're not even really that close. Um, and so I think I think this stuff is. There's a lot of money in it. There's a lot of money and growth in it. Um, how did you manage your time working at Nvidia and making content consistently? Uh, pissed off my wife or my, my fiance. <laughs> I just didn't hang out with her. I just didn't do it. I, I literally just worked, then ended stream, spent 30 minutes with her and then went live. And I did this all the fucking time. Um, zero social life, Andy, pretty bad health habits. And I did that for two years and then I made a bunch of money. I don't regret it, but I would never do it again. Uh... <laughs> Proudest moment as a content creator. I don't know. I don't know. Um, my happiest pop-offs were like, you know, some of the world records, some of the the Hollow Knight, uh, Absolute Radiance. Those are most fun. I think my video I'm most proud of is my 2023 predictions video, <laughs> which is ironic because I can't finish this one. But I think, I think if you really look at that video, it's like, if you look at other videos around the same time, I think I was, I think I did a really good job. I think I did a really good job compared to other predictions, even like Wall Street predictions. I think I did a really good job. I think that's a, I think I'm very proud of that video. I did a lot of research and I trusted my gut and I couldn't do it this year because it's just, I was too psyched out. Um, any plans for kids? Yup. Yup. I'm definitely going to have a little A. Hundo P. Uh, I don't know when. I don't know exactly when. I don't have a plan, but I'm going to have kids for sure. There's no point in making money <laughs> if, I, if I'm not going to, if I'm going to just not have a family. Um. Mm. Did you see the Northern Line clip where he finds out his daughter can read on stream? Not only did I see that clip, I am quite certain that it fucking convinced a bunch of people to have kids that probably shouldn't. <laughs> I think a bunch of people instantly have now got baby fever and have rushed into some kids that are gonna they're gonna regret, bro. Uh that was far too cute of a, of a clip. Uh, yeah, there's gonna be a there's gonna be a fucking 
Peloton-esque baby boom. Yeah, it is crazy how long Northern Lion like set that up. Like, if you guys don't know, he uh, gave her a script and they practiced it off stream a hundred times <laughs> to farm that exact clip. It was a whole thing was scheduled weeks in advance. There was a camera crew ready. That it was. Um, It was Jerma in a morph suit. <laughs> it was extra hard because, yeah, she couldn't read the script. She can't read. It was all made up. <laughs> she had to memorize the lines vocally. So it was it was a real disaster, but they made it work. Um, can we expect a family vlog channel when you have kids? Oh, yeah, dude. The whole reason to have kids in America is to farm them for content. They're going to be opening toys. We're going to be doing family vlogs. We're going to do van life. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be it's going to be super duper duper sick. Little A toy reviews. <laughs> going to be great, dude. Clout kids. Yeah, they're going to do Robux giveaways. I'm going to I'm going to my son on his 4th birthday will get a prank channel. <laughs> I'm going to help him with his first prank channel video. Okay? Uh, Lil A will tell his viewers that he'll get to that toy eventually and then never play with it. <laughs> he takes after his old man. They grow up so fast. <laughs> All right, on that note, uh, I just wanted to stop here and vibe for a bit. Thanks, chat, for spending some time with me. I will be live tomorrow. Um... I have that meeting at noon. I'm going to see if I can move it so I can go live and play Outer Wilds. That meeting is going to be three hours. And if I do the full meeting, I'm going to be tired. And then I'm going to take a little break. And then I'm going to go live at five. And then everyone's going to be mad. So I'm going to see if I can move it. And if I can move it, then I will go live. Um, sevens, thanks for, thanks for chilling with me for a bit. Fun little stream. Good to have a fucking few thousand people show up and just talk um we'll rate a spectacore a spectacore went through a pretty bad breakup recently uh very sad and is a really great person just a nice overall person uh tick a spec a spec tick core and so let's give him some love pop off in his chat maybe he runs some ads uh, um and yeah, that's that. We are, I'm trying to work on something with, with spec, but I've been oversubscribing myself, so I need to chill. Uh, but we want to do some gold split stuff. We were talking about it. So anyway, anyway thanks. Have a good night. Goodbye.